Hi, I'm Michelle Keep. I'm Joshua Keep. And welcome to our year end podcast. Yay, 2013. What a great year it's been. It's been um, unreal, to yeah. say the least. It has, yeah. I mean, uh, it was only a couple years ago that we mm-hmm. really started publishing professionally. Uh, and, and then the second we started publishing professionally, we got so stressed out that we gave ourselves carpal tunnel syndrome and couldn't write or touch a computer for six months to a year. Something like that. (laughs) Uh, It doesn't sound completely right, but yeah. (laughs) It was a very, very long summer, we'll we'll put it that way, but very fun. Yeah. And uh, now here we are anyways, the end of 2013, and uh, we've got over 60 books published. With like 20 not being allowed on Amazon right now. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Thanks to all those uh, lovely rules about content and whatnot. Yeah, they don't like our incest very much or our barely legal, so... Yeah. Apparently that's a thing. (laughs) Yeah. Written words, not good. 19-year-olds. Which is totally legal here in Canada, by the way. It's legal at 16 here in Canada. Yeah, but you can't write about that. Yeah, you can only write about people who are 18 plus. Go, Canada! Hypothetically. But then apparently you can't sell it hardly. No. So, (laughs) So, yeah. So, it's been a very um, different year than what we're used to. Yeah, there's been a lot of success, Mm -hmm. but there's been a lot of of work. Work a lot of annoying <laughs> up and downs, ups and downs with the rules. I just completely had to remake the Warlord's Concubine cover because Amazon pushed it into erotica, saying that the cover was too naughty. So, um, you know, there's another hour that had to go towards mitigating some damage to uh, make up for some delicate sensibilities. Yeah, it, which is funny because, I mean, uh, it's one of our most popular novels. So a lot, you know, maybe a lot of you have read it, but the cover is just, you know, a woman wearing a dress, and I mean, you can see her midriff. You can see uh, her hips, which we think is probably the problem. But I mean, it's very tame. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen like the covers for like the 1970s fantasy and like sci-fi books, but they had like breasts everywhere. So. Yeah. I don't know. It's like the cover of heavy metal, like... 18 breasts per square inch. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, obviously, it's... I mean, I come from a very 9 to 5 background and working every day. But uh, ever since we earnestly started publishing at the beginning of 2013, um, things have been strange and awesome. And I'm... We're receiving something that I can only call fan mail, which sounds so conceited and strange, and I don't really know how to deal with that. Yeah. (laughs) Like, we both kind of feel a little bit weird calling it fan mail, but we don't know what else to call it. Yeah, like you said, it it sounds kind of conceited to say, well, yes, I'm reading fan mail. But, you know, that that has genuinely been the answer, you know, at numerous occasions this year when some people family have asked me well, what are you doing right now oh well, I'm, I'm responding to fan I'm mail. answering fan mail it, 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 <laughs> it would have been the genuine answer but i just don't have the ego to say that out loud yeah so just for you our lovely podcast viewers we love you yeah but it's been great and we love talking with people who are into our writing and hearing and- people's theories and opinions on stuff has been yeah. the, the biggest excitement for me just actually like reading someone's Long, in-depth analysis of, you know, the thought, the character's motivations and the plot. And something. Even when I didn't agree or, like, it wasn't what I had intended. Like, oh my god, that's really interesting. I never thought of it that way. You know, yeah. where the authors didn't think of it that way. But it's something so interesting and you kind of have to wonder if that was there underneath the surface or, you know. Yeah. Uh, they, it, readers often open our eyes to a lot of things that we didn't see because everybody has their own biases including us so 
And then it's just really satisfying, of course, too, when they completely get what you're going for. Yeah. When, like, you feel somebody gets something that you wrote that's so personal and and having somebody else get it, it's just so reassuring. Yeah, because, I mean, you sure as hell don't get you. Yeah, exactly. I have no fucking clue what's going on in my body yeah. or brain or anything else that right. has to do with me. <laughs> and, I mean, I don't know because uh, all I know is that you're not really a human being. You're a pod person here on <sighs> Earth infiltrating humanity. He keeps saying that just because I am... A little clumsy and a little naive, and I say things that other people interpret very differently than how I intend. Human beings, yes. Right. Have a no. No. Different interpretation no. of things that, <laughs> than you pod people do. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, um, yeah, I'm kind of strange, I guess. You're lacking in social graces. Yeah. Politely. But, uh, what? I could be great. I could be really good. I mean, sure, sure. Yeah. I Let's blunder just... my way through life and it works. You're very successful. Right? <laughs> you, you do great. You're just so charming about your blundering. It's, cool. it's perfect, yeah. yeah. But uh, and and one of the one of the more amusing ways is when uh, a reader gets what you're going for, but they don't realize that they got it. Uh one of the reviews for our latest novel, Magic Academy. Uh, remember they said like they wanted more background information, lore, and the world because they didn't understand why uh, in this world elves had a kind of higher station in society than humans. And they said like you know uh, it's said in the in the novel that, that this was the reviewer that uh, you know elves are just you know like uh, more proficient at magic, whatever. But you know from the actual events of the story, it seems rather it's more like just that the elves just happen to have more money and more access to education and that sort of thing that allows them to rise up. You know, like, and there's an inconsistency. I'm like, well, not really. Like, you, you figured it out. You don't need any more background. You, like, you figured it. it out. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, of course the elves had all this kind of bullshit nonsense about why they thought they were superior. Because they live longer or are more intelligent or blah, whatever. Blah, blah. Yeah, and all these ideas. Were, but no, it, it really just boiled down to the fact that, you know, they're they, the upper class. They held, yeah, they were the upper class. They held a higher station. Their children grew up with access to education and resources that, you know, poor, poor human children didn't have. And I mean, like, it's, that's one of the things where it's not said, but you could see it in the world. Like, uh, Malin, one of the main characters, he came from a poor background. And, you know, he didn't have the, uh, knowledge or proficiency that other elves did despite him being an elf and i mean so even though they say it's because elves are better well then we have malin who you know he's on par with the uh, furia the main character and that's because both of them grew up with the same background and the same upbringing so you know it, it's one of those things that's not said but it's shown yeah and I thought it was great. It was kind of cute because, I mean, the reviewer had, the reader had seen it. Like, they had figured it out, but they didn't think they had figured it out. Yeah. They, because we hadn't said it, said it so bluntly, but, you know. We get a lot of really awesome reviews. Some are really confusing at times. Um, in that, like, today we got one that said that we didn't know what women wanted <laughs> in their erotica and that it was for degenerates and that we should go back to our blow up doll. And but I mean, the <laughs> part where they said that it's quite obvious that this was written by a man. Which, yeah. So <laughs> I, I don't mean, know if you can tell, but you know, despite being a pod person, Michelle, definitely I am has in a, a female body. Yes. She, she has a female exterior. Yeah. So I think that qualifies. <laughs> so I don't mean, you? I, I, I do. I was personally. talking to the listeners. Well, do you, yeah. listeners? Comment. Okay. Let us know. Perfect. Um, but it, it's funny She's because. A cute pod shut up. <laughs> um, it's funny because, I mean, the book itself was a monster um, breeding story. It's so, a different one, not Magic Academy. Yeah, not Magic Academy. This one's just one of our erotic shorts on uh, JM Keep. So, I mean, it's a completely gender-neutral name. Um, we just did that for ease of, you know, making covers and helping people find what they're looking for. Yeah, certain vendors, like uh, like Apple's 
Yeah, uh, Apple doesn't stores. allow a- an ampersand. They don't allow multiple authors on yeah. the book. So That's you have a to put bizarre it... arbitrary rule, so we yeah. have to pretend we're one person. Yeah. So we did JM Keep for all our, our erotic shorts, and um, we kept it purposely gender neutral because... You know, we write for both genders and neither genders and, you know, all genders. And we don't really think too much about who's going to like it because, I mean... We write for ourselves. Yeah, we write what we like. We're not marketing people. We don't try to... We don't target a demographic. We don't go out to say, like, we really need to get those Fifty Shades people. Yeah, we are really, really, really bad at that, if you haven't noticed (laughs) by the fact that we write mostly fantasy, which isn't exactly, like, the hottest genre right now. Um, We do what we like. We write what turns us on, what makes us happy, what we want to experiment with, what we maybe even want to see if it turns us on. Um, and, you know, we're not sure. So we'll write it up in a story and see, like, if that does it for us. And there have been stories we've written where we find out, no, it doesn't do it for us. But we publish it anyways. <laughs> yeah, we once did, like, a Torin and an Orc uh, fan fiction back in WoW and found that didn't really work for us because all I could think of the entire time was, like, a cowlick. Like, uh, just, like, a full face, like, cow tongue all over. And it didn't really turn me on, so <laughs> it was a mental block, let's say that. Um, yeah. Kissing, not not a Torin's strong point. For you, anyways. For me. For me. For others, I am sure that is a bonus and more power to you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was, it was just funny, the idea that there's any sort of one thing that women all want. Yeah, I mean, you kind of understand people want to boil things down to familiar things. Uh, they figure, I'm a woman and I didn't like this, so all women must not like this. And it's just not at all true. Um, you cannot determine what somebody's going to like by you know, what gender or what sex they are. We have quite a lot of male readers, though the bulk of our readership is still female. Yeah, I think just women tend to read more. But, I mean, on our Facebook page and stuff, you can see the stats. And on our mailing list, we could see the stats. And we have a lot of males that are into our stuff. So we think that's awesome because, I mean, men don't get catered to enough in... uh, not so much erotic shorts, because I think a lot of erotic shorts are written with men in mind, but like for longer stories, I don't think they're considered so heavily, personally. Okay. But I just like writing for us, and yeah. we just happen to be a male and a female living together yeah. in joyous harmony. That's true. I can't really comment on what the field is like for uh, erotica, fancy, or a romance targeted at uh, men or women, because I just don't read it. Yeah. Uh, it's been my, like, what well, constantly get uh, questions, like, the, the favorite thing review, uh, uh, interviewers like to ask us when we do an interview with, uh, websites or blogs is, you know, like, oh, where do you get from, what other, like, erotica writers or uh, romance writers were your inspiration? And I kind of have to fudge it a bit, because I know they don't want to hear, well, I don't read that. Yeah. But, uh, to be honest, and, and it's not like I dislike the genre, because, I mean, I write it. Obviously, I like it, and I love writing it. Uh, it's that, it's a conscious effort. I don't like to uh, be influenced by other people in, like, the, the field. I yeah. like, when I write, I like it to be my creation. Um, I'm not sure, maybe some of you have been watching our Twitters, um, but we've been watching Peaky Blinders lately. Uh, which is a 1920s um, gangster movie in, where is it? Birmingham. Birmingham. Um, so I was looking up the information about it, and on the Wikipedia page, it um, said that some critics had compared it to another uh, show, Boardwalk Empire. And uh, so that's around the same time. It's about Prohibition era. I haven't seen it or anything. But the director of Peaky Blinders said to the critics um, that he's never watched them. He said he's never seen The Wire. He's never seen Boardwalk Empire. He's never seen any of them. And when he was asked why, he said... It's sort of a deliberate thing, and I don't really want to be looking at other people's work because it does affect what you do inevitably. 
And yeah. I think that's what we try to do. We try to avoid that um, selling, re, you know, repackaging and selling of ideas, whether intentional or not. Uh, we don't like to be just writing what somebody else did and doing it in our own way. We want to do something completely unique. Yeah, and as much as you can, right? Well, yeah, and I mean, I think we're doing a good job with it because a lot of our reviews and a lot of our comments from fans and stuff is that our stuff is just so unique. They've never read anything like that before. And, um, you know, I th- I think a lot of that is just because we don't read the genre anymore. We used to before we started writing. But once we started, you know, actually writing our own stories, it, it faded into the background. Uh, yeah. Uh, one of my... <laughs> Favorite sort of reader comments is the, oh, this was disgusting. I couldn't get any enjoyment out of it. I, I was just repulsed instead of turned off. But it was really well written and very unique. <laughs> I have to yeah. say, that is probably one of my favorite comments to get. Yeah, it's nice <laughs> to know that even when somebody is just, you know, disgusted with you, they acknowledge that you have some talent, which is, again, I feel so egotistical even saying it. But, you know... We've been writing for a very long time. Um, I mean, I started writing when I was a kid, and so did Josh. And we started writing seriously when we were playing World of Warcraft. And we started writing stories for each other and for our guild. Um, We started writing a lot of erotica. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I mean, we've practiced quite a lot. Yeah. We first... <clears throat> made our first, like, we made our first forays in the writing together 13 years ago. Yeah. Almost. Uh, yeah, uh, 13 years ago when uh, we first met online back then, back in the olden days. <laughs> and, on, uh, on AOL and some Messenger. Yeah, shh, don't tell them that. They'll Sorry. Think less of us. <laughs> uh, they will definitely think less of us now. Cut this part out. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so as we met in some posh country club, we began <laughs> writing, uh, you know, a r- little, uh, like, love stories to each other in the mail, snail mail, on paper. Yep. Written probably in English class while I was declining to read the prescribed book of the month. <laughs> I'm a rebel. Yeah, you are. But it just comes natural being a pop person, so. Yeah. I wouldn't brag about it too much. Mm. You're sweet. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, 2013 had so much that was unexpected. Um, yeah. So many people who have just, like, really been amazing and who have really liked our stuff and who've, who have, like, actually contacted us and told us about it and, you know, asked for more. And it's just odd. Um we were keynote speakers at a sex expo here in May. Yeah, that was fun. Was um, weird. Yeah. Uh, we did, well, I did two erotic readings, and we did two um, talks, one on fetishes and how to bring them up with your partner, mm-hmm. and the other on how to write erotica and we met a lot of really cool local fans who Mm. had actually read our stuff and who came up to us and were talking about it and who were really excited about it and the chance to meet us and that was just something surreal we figured that would be something yeah being stopped in the uh aisle on our way out of the lecture hall by uh someone who was just completely blown away by our work yeah She's just completely blocked off her way, held out her arms. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> she is so adorable, too. And, I mean, that, too, is what really... I mean, firstly, that's why we podcast now, is because that was so much fun. But that also really opened my eyes up to the fact that you cannot judge what somebody wants to read by what they look like. Um, or, that, how, or how they behave. Or how they behave. Lives. That woman, I think she said she had, like, four kids who were yeah. teenagers... Um, and she, you know, loved our stuff. We had, um, a couple, a few couples who were really into us and really digging our talks and they were oh, chatting yeah. with us afterwards. And, and a um, few people who tried to hit on us and get us into uh four way or three Yeah, way. which 
Yeah, we're we're still shy with stuff like that. We're not but, that cool. Yeah, we're not that cool. But wait, I, wait, wait, I, wait. let's cut this part out. Okay. <laughs> we were banging like crazy for weeks everybody, after the everybody. Expo. Yeah, yeah, we. I actually have um some new friends on my Fet Life list from the expo, which is awesome. My and dick I still, is still chafed. <laughs> shut up. And I still chat with them. Um. Yeah, so, I mean, that's something that we figured maybe in, like, 20 years we might be keynote speakers for something or we might be able to do (laughs) something like this, and it's happened already, and it's just, I don't know, I still think it's one of those things that hasn't really sunk in. It's been, like, nine, eight months or something like that. Yeah. (laughs) This is also the year, too, we first started selling actual paperbacks. Yep. Yeah, I learned how to go on Create Space and set that all up and like actually getting a paperback novel of, you know, filled with your words. Yeah. Is really like every time we get one, like in the mail, because we have a bunch of them in paperback now and we give them out for prizes for um, people who are on our newsletter or people on Goodreads. Mm. Um, So every time we get a box of them it's like oh my god this is our stuff this is our words this is our (laughs) everything so it wears off no it doesn't (laughs) (laughs) oh well the the last one getting the magic academy our our biggest novel today it was was huge such a huge novel it was huge it's yeah like compared to all of our other books i mean I think it's probably about twice the size of uh, Magic or um, the Mistress. So I mean, it it's a big book. Yeah, yeah, it's double the length of some of our other novels. Yeah, so um, that was surreal as well. There's a lot of great coming out of this this year. Mm-hmm. I think we learned how to manage stress a bit better. Yeah, it took some doing, but... <laughs> we had to take a little break in August because a certain one of us, I'm not going to name names, it was me, um, a pod person. started stressing stressing out so much trying to figure everything out and how to do things perfectly. And, you know, I, I've just come to the conclusion that I'm not going to be perfect and I'm not great at marketing and that's okay because, yeah. you know, I, I'm not... I don't have to be great at everything, I guess. Right. <laughs> I try. Beings, human beings are not particularly known mm. for being perfect at a whole lot of things. Yeah. But for those who don't know, I mean, I am I take on a lot of different challenges and I enjoy them. Um, I write. I do the formatting for the books. I make the covers. I do the web design and you know, maintaining the website on a bunch of forums. I edit this podcast, so hopefully it's not too terrible. Um, And I do all of this, and I want to be great at all of this. And I've now decided that I want to start drawing again. And (laughs) I'm also thinking of taking up cosplay, because I don't have enough on my plate. So, oh, and I also paint models in my spare time. Yeah. So... I like being good at a lot of different artistic endeavors, we'll say. And, Mm -hmm. you know, marketing is not very artistic. No, it's kind of a pain in the ass. And I don't know what the hell to do with it. Yeah, me neither. So, you know, I'm just going to keep talking at my lovely microphone and talking with our awesome fans and just trust that that'll work. And looking at some of the marketing efforts by the big multi-billion dollar corporations, I'm not too convinced they have all that great of idea of what they're doing either. So I don't feel too bad about it personally. <laughs> yeah, but appara- then I'm not a professional <laughs> like co-host here. Yeah, apparently, um, like the average earnings for self-published authors is like five thousand a year. Or the something. median. The median. So, uh, according to an article that was linked to us by a reader, I believe. Uh, it said, yes, indie authors have a median earning of $5,000 a year, which is, of course, you know, really low. Yeah. Though, I mean... It's not is, a living income, no, but it's, it's good. No. It's good. It's a supplementary income for a lot yeah. of people. That you know, That's a nice chunk of extra change for what I'm assuming would be a hobby that you love. Yeah. For a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, 
But now the big thing was that, oh, for published authors, the median income was, and uh, of course this was phrased very differently, was 5000 to $9,000. Hmm. So uh, it's not a big jump. So it's, yeah, it's not a huge jump, and it's still, of course, not a, a living uh, wage, a uh, living income or whatever. Uh, but I mean, assuming it's you know, the upper end, $9,000. And keeping in mind that uh, the publishers, I mean, these days, they don't just pluck up fresh people with their first book. That almost mm. never happens. Uh, what they do these days is they tend to uh, keep an eye on the sales. Yeah, who's uh, doing charts. well. Who's doing well of indie authors. Mm. Like, you know, when they hit a certain success level, like once they enter into the top, what is it, like... Hundred or ten. Yeah, or so. once they get into the top hundred of all of Amazon, that's when people start getting approached by agents and uh, publishing companies. I've heard. Right. Yeah. But I mean, like, I'm friends with a lot of very successful people. People who are, you know, awe inspiring to me because it's insane how well they've been doing at writing and it's awesome but like they haven't been approached until they've reached the top 100 and even then some of them haven't been approached even though they've been making you know dozens of thousands is that even a way that it could be said <laughs> <laughs> like tens of thousands we'll say we'll of, make allowances for yeah. <laughs> of thousands of dollars like every month um you know even then, it's not a guarantee to be approached. So, publishing is changing a lot. We have broken into the top 100, yeah. which was another big achievement for this year. Yes. We've been on, like, top 100 for a lot of different lists. Um, dark fantasy, fantasy romance, paranormal romance. Um, I'm sure there's a ton more. I think, I can't remember right now, but I know it's been a lot so <laughs> we've done well, but I mean, uh, my point was that uh, you know, so publishers are apparently only at most managing the raise, the median income of authors, yeah. nine thousand. But they're they're picking already successful people from indie authors. So I mean, what that indicates to me is that the publishers aren't offering financially; they're not offering much, if anything. Mm. It seems that they would be, like, you know, because if. Your like you know your expected median income as an indie author is five thousand. Yeah, if, but your if best it's case double, like your best yeah. median income author with a publisher is going to be like you know just a few extra thousand over that a year. Yeah, I think it just depends on um, what you're hoping to get out of it. I mean, for us, the biggest reason that we've decided to self-publish isn't the money, um, because you know there's also a lot of hassle and a lot of. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah. a lot of trouble self-publishing it's not just something that you you know easily do and throw up a book and hope for the best mm -hmm. but I mean our biggest thing is that we publish and we write stuff that publishers won't touch yeah. um, we like dark fantasy dark romance dark erotica anything with dark in front of it um, <laughs> you know we like twisted relationships we like things that don't go well we don't write often monogamous um, and typical romance We got all the monogamy we need right here. Yeah. I don't want to write that shit. For we've me. been together for like 13 years now. That's enough. Yeah. So, you know, we write a lot of people, or like a lot of stories with characters that sleep around, a lot of um, characters that, you know, don't fall in love. They're falling in lust or they're, you know. Yeah. They're fickle. They want to try new things. They want to try new people. A lot of their romances be tragedy. Yeah, and it's not always like, uh, you know, threesomes or happy menage a trois either. Like, it's a lot of the time, a lot of conflict. Um, not even so much love triangles. It's just she'll, like a person will sleep with another character and then leave them in the morning and that's it. You know, the only... Kind of a love triangle that we've written, like, think of in the traditional sense would be their newest novel. Magic Academy. Magic Academy. Yeah. And that was different and challenging for us on a lot of different um, fronts because it was more, I guess, typical in a lot of ways. It wasn't how we set out to make it typical like that. I, I didn't even honestly have a love triangle in mind when we, when 
when I set out, like, coming up with the plot. And then mm. It was just how things went. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's all about finding what fits the story. Yeah. And I wrote a blog post on one-handed writers um, about reader expectations and how we often don't meet them. And that's just because we do what feels right to the story. And a lot of the times writing to a formula um, doesn't feel authentic to us. And we don't do our best work when we are writing to a formula. I I don't like writing the formula. Now, I know a lot of authors who are amazing at it and who can take a tired formula and make it fresh and new without changing what makes it integral. Um, yeah. We don't have that skill very much. We're yeah, we're a lot better at twisting. Eh, well, I don't know. Uh, we don't set out to do it. No, it's just we, how it goes. We, we do we do do it at times. Yeah, it's all about what fits the story. Yeah, but I think that's very much how like Magic Academy ended up going. Our newest novel, and that's been. Getting nothing but rave reviews. I don't, we've not gotten a single negative review that I can think of, and we've had dozens of them. Yeah, no, no it's been going really well, which is awesome. Um, actually, that leads me into the next thing that we wanted to talk about was um, we've been getting a lot of mail from people who want to help us. Which no, wait, no, screw that. One more thing. Oh, no. Yes, quiet pod person. <gasps> This year was also the year that showed my marketing director, oh, Miss Pod no, Person, not this. was wrong. No. In her insistence no. that we, we write contemporary, no. boring erotica and romance. No. Because like our top selling books for the year were, were ridiculous stuff like Bread by the Monster in the Forest, which was like a gory, monstrous thing where this big eight limbed creature knocks up this woman and it's, it comes to in the second novel is this big gory climax where she gives birth to these hideous monster things and that was like bestseller of the year Josh seems to think that anytime I recommend we do something contemporary it is because I hate him and I want him to suffer and that I'm only doing it for marketing reasons however he keeps denying to acknowledge the fact that perhaps I enjoy contemporary pieces and think that they could be very sexy and exciting. Now all our readers... And he begrudgingly, begrudgingly admitted that, you know, he didn't have a horrible time when I had him write a, a threesome story that was totally contemporary and no one shifted into a wolf and nobody was a witch and nobody was an elf or a demon. I was being kind. Anyways, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. This was the year (laughs) of my victory over the alien infiltrators Uh, in our midst. Great. Yeah, perfect. So expect a lot more fantasy, sci-fi, and weird shit coming from us because we realize now that that's what our fans want. And to hell with all that contemporary okay. boring stuff. And it, yeah, that was the name, yeah. the temporary name of our threesome novel was Contemp Boring. Yeah, I like I that. I named that. Oh, uh, yeah. To spite you. Oh, sure. Okay, so anyways, if any of you out there want some dark fantasy erotica contemporary... Or dark, bleh, 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 bleh. Bleh, bleh. Yeah. If anybody wants some dark contemporary erotica... Please email me. Let me know. I will put my email down below. And you tell me if you want that. Because you know what? I really like um, Sky Warren. And I really like Kitty Thomas. And I really like CJ Roberts. And I know you don't want that stuff. No, please. Email it and tell her how wrong she is. No. And so if you want a more standard, fair, contemporary kidnapping story, uh, let that. me know. And test. There's a new one, Tess. I haven't read her book yet. Yeah, and make sure you put in about how it really needs some fucking magic or sci-fi aspects to make it really interesting. Anyways, as I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted by these pseudo-facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go on with your thing. 
Um, we've been getting a lot of mail from people who are interested in helping us out and they ask how they can do that. So we are actually in the works of finding a couple of different ways um, that you guys can support us. And a sweatshop. Yeah, our, um, our J.E. and M. Keep sweatshop where you can make books and autograph them for all our fans. Yeah. <laughs> While we lash you yes. for erotic titillation yes. and to work faster. Yes. And you'll all be naked. We might be naked too sometimes. I am going to be wearing leather. Leather kilt. I will make it happen. Yeah, kilt. I, I could do latex if that's good. I work at it, but beefing up. He has. We have a Bowflex now, and I bought him some power blocks for Christmas. Um, so, yeah, he's going to be pretty buff by the time we get our sweatshop up and running. Yeah. I've also been going to the gym, and I look pretty awesome. You do. Thanks. You look amazing, especially, no, especially don't. for a pot person. I hate you. <laughs> so, um, the actual ways that you know we're we're thinking that people can help is um, there's going to be a private Facebook group where you can talk with us and um, get sneak peeks of what's coming up and what we're working on because we are always working on like. 10 different things. I think we have like 10 different things or something in our we got um, a lot going in on. progress. And we have a bunch um, going out to editor and I have 11 stories to publish um, sometime in the next couple weeks. We have a big back catalog of stuff we've been working yeah. on for years. So, you know, we're going to be letting everybody know about that and we're going to have a private group who's going to get the heads up on all this stuff early we're gonna have special giveaways um in return for giving us some reviews you know honest spreading the word spreading the word yeah because the best advertisement is word of mouth yeah and because you know you guys seem to want ways to help us which is weird and awesome and i love you for it um so there's also this other site called patreon um yeah where you can become our patron and you can support Sounds us. Sounds sexy. It does. It? <laughs> um, so we're getting Be that. A patron. <laughs> we're getting that set up. Um, so hopefully we'll have that done in the next week or so. Um, and there will be different levels of rewards that you could get. Uh, you know, you can get ebooks or um, Spanx. Spanx. Digital Spanx. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're working on that. So we'll link that in the comments as well. And because by the time I get this edited, I'm not sure what day it will be. <laughs> it might be 2014. Like. It may be, but I'm hoping to have it out for Chris or er, for New Year's Eve. Yeah, because we know that all of you are just clamoring, I, dying. I, I, it's we're um, like we're like two months late, and we've actually got a lot of really great comments on the last one about. Halloween movies that we could watch. But we know you're all dying. You're just absolutely dying to spend your New Year's Eve counting down to 2014 listening to the Keeps talk about erotica. Woo! Well, we watch Dumb and Dumber because it is now a... Tradition. Tradition. Tradition is the word Tradition. we humans use. <laughs> Shut up. So, yes. Dumb and Dumber. Um, Josh also mentioned that I will be getting drunk for him to take advantage of. I'm not sure if this is going to happen while Dumb and Dumber's on, but we'll see. Um, also, I have a new camera in the mail, so I'm... Dumb and Dumber always got me in the mood. I'm hoping I'm saying. that, you know, it might be sexy fun times. Oh, you. No. Okay. Um, NSA people, you listening, you know? You can look out for those sexy pictures. Shh. Don't share them, though. They're private. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just hand them around the office like we know you do. So, um, one more thing that I think we wanted to talk about was our... I'm really sorry for my voice, by the way. Um, I've had a cold for the last, like, I don't know, two or three weeks. and Yeah, I'm, that's code for my pod person uh, language device is a little haywire because of the cold. Then why is... Your throat fucked. 
This is just how I sound. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, uh, things that we're looking forward to next year, um, I think is going to be a good topic because there is so much that we're looking forward to next year. Um, mm-hmm. Sequels. The year of the oh, sequels. Yeah. We got a lot of sequels coming up. Yes. Um, so for those of you that have been following our stuff, you know that we have a few books that we want to do sequels for. Um, I think we're starting with The Mistress. Yeah. Um, which is our 1920s historical noir mystery novel set in the flapper era yeah in prohibition era uh which is super hot genre people are clamoring that for. was my favorite novel of the last year i think that we yeah. did um that Not one being was just going saying it was the favorite novel of any author but yeah our, our, our novels um <laughs> that was inspired by uh call of cthulhu it's call of cthulhu without the Cthulhu. Yeah. It, there's Just no... call of. <laughs> yes. That's the only time that Josh was ever willing to remove the sci-fi aspects was when it was placed in the 1920s. Yeah. Because he can't it's do anything contemporary. contemporary. <laughs> no, I, I live in the present. Okay? I mean, I know you pod people are kind of in a flux between times and stuff like this. Josh just but... doesn't know how people date because we've been going out since he was 17. Yeah. So he doesn't understand human relationships. And since I was dating a pod person at the time... I never understood how people I dated. I never really had a clue. No. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be working on The Mistress, which Josh tells me there will be um, travel involved. That's pretty much all I know of at this point. Yeah. Just sit back, sweet cheeks. <laughs> I'll be driving the riding car. Speaking of cars of driving that he is going to be driving, um, we're also doing the Warlord's Concubine. That I think that one didn't one's... work as a segue. <laughs> uh, I'm so embarrassed. Um, I'm sorry, people. <laughs> the quality of segues has just degraded shamefully on this podcast. <laughs> Refunds are in the mail as I speak. Perfect. Anyways. Yeah, so, Magic Academy, sequel to that. Yes. What will be coming after the mistress? And then the Warlord's Concubine, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, all of them are already planned out. We like, just actually have to sit down and write them. Yeah, we gotta do that work shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, when I became a writer, I thought I was just gonna be sitting around being mopey and going to coffee shops and shit, but it turns out you gotta spend a lot of fucking time writing stuff down. That's what my dad thinks Josh does. Yeah. <laughs> Incidentally. Because, because being a pod person, she didn't realize when she told her family that, oh, Josh is a writer, that in human parlance that means, oh, he's a useless layabout who just sits around the house being a bum. But no, I make money, damn it. And you right, sit around the house money. doing it. Yes, I sit around the house doing yeah. it. I don't go to coffee shops. No. Josh is not a very social person. He's right. not very good with people. I talk at people, like now, not with. Yeah. And he also makes insulting comments about his loved one. Oh, you figured out it's insulting? <laughs> Shut up! Oh, honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know your understanding of human interactions had progressed that far. Yeah. Uh, this is great. Oh, this is super. Take my hand. Yeah, oh, perfect. Sorry. <laughs> so, and we'll also be putting out a lot more shorts because sometimes after a long day of working, I just need some good old-fashioned erotic shorts. Yeah. So if you have any requests for those, let us know because we can, you know, do one of those a night. Well, we can write it in a night sometimes. Well, but yeah. All the other work takes longer. All that boring publishing, marketing shit. But, uh, yeah. And I do think we'll have to do a third part to Mon- Bread by the Monster in the Forest. Yeah. We have, um. Soon. Yeah. We have another one that's really exciting an erotic short that has, like, plot. Um, it's in a futuristic sci fi world where women are rare 
and have been turned into sex toys. Yeah. Um, Through either surgery or uh, a uh, complex process of, like, uh, drugs and hormonal injections and stuff. Yeah. So we have the first two written in that series, and it's actually really cool. It, it's yeah. like weird it. and different and fun. Because it, it seems like such a, um easy, I guess, concept. Like, it seems so light and just kind of carefree because it follows one of these women who, you know, all she cares about is sex. But there's such a dark world behind her. And, you know, it kind of comes out in a lot of the men's interactions with one another. Yeah, uh, she's special because in this sort of world, uh, women had been kind of relegated to, you know, breeding and sexual objects. And so... uh most of the women are, in a manner of speaking, kind of lobotomized in a sense. They've kind of lost their humanity. But she hasn't been. She's, by some new method, has been made to uh, be this sort of bimbo sex toy through like drugs and hormonal therapy. So, you know, her core person, who was a very clever and bright young woman, mm. is still within her somewhere it's just been through locked uh, beha- away behavioral therapy drugs and hormonal treatments she's been transformed into something she wasn't yeah so i mean it's really cool and that'll be out i don't know in another month or two it has to go for editing first um yeah send that over to the editor <laughs> what else do we have um we have an editor yeah we That's have cool. a very awesome editor named Phoebe. We actually have a bunch of different editors that we use for different things, uh, depending on what type of editing we need. But yeah. she's our main one because she does really good proofreading. She did yeah. One Dreamer's Wake as well, which is one of our longer novels, yeah. which is male-centric. Yeah. It's full of male fantasy stuff. Mm. And... As well, we're going to try to get the Tiffany series back on Amazon. So hopefully in the next week or so, that'll be back under slightly new titles again. Until they take it down again or something. Yeah, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. Um, we also have a new series coming out called Debauched University, which was so much fun to write. It's about, um, I don't know, a guy, a... a Ice self, I think. Is he an ice self? Yeah, that sounds right. He's an elf of some kind, and uh, <laughs> I can't really remember. He has gray skin though. Um, him going to university and finding out that one of his professors is uh, playing around with certain potions that make him virile. Uh, he gets involved in kind of a sort of. He was looking for this underculture of, uh, you know, debauchery within the university that he heard about. And it turns out to be more than he bargained for. And it's awesome. So we have the first three um, done of that, and we're going to be working on the fourth one. So that should be fun. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that means we've probably talked enough. So just a couple of ending notes, if that's cool. Yeah. Josh? We're going to put this on hold and take uh, reader votes. And, <laughs> and we'll come back with the end notes. If you vote for it. Go. Actually, screw that. Uh, we're on iTunes now. Yay! iTunes! Hopefully. they uh, We've done up the submission. And hopefully they'll just say, yes, okay. Um, yeah, we, Apple can be a real Yeah, fork. Apple's hard. Sorry if you're listening, Apple. Um, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Yeah, we love sorry, you. We baby. love you. We we do very well on your platform when you allow us to publish there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get along better. Yeah. So uh, we're doing that through Libsign. Libsyn. I don't know how to actually pronounce it. That's a word that I've only read online because I don't think it's a real word. Um, I think it's just the name of the website. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, Names don't need to be real words. Right? So Not in human land. Shut up! So we have an RSS feed. If anybody is more interested in following our po- podcast that way, I'll put it in the links as well. Um, also, I'm not sure if you've maybe noticed, we have a new YouTube channel because for some reason, YouTube is very frustrating at times too. Sorry, YouTube. 
Um, <laughs> so I'm not. the first the Fuck first really YouTube YouTube channel was Fuck under YouTube. my personal Google Plus account. So I changed that. So now it's under a separate account, which means that if you subscribed on our original channel, um, you have to subscribe to our new channel. This will be the last um, podcast going up on the old channel. So switch. Yeah. And um, subscribe and like. And all that yeah, stuff. please. Because, you know, I really like talking to you guys. And it makes my day when I get to wake up and see that we have mail from readers or comments or likes or whatever. Uh, yes. Share us around. It, it helps it a lot. It gives us happy feelings in our pants. Yeah. And, panties. and in our brains. Whichever is more important. Uh, that's less sexy. <laughs> Um, also in the future, we're going to try to get some awesome guests on here. Um, we've been meaning to do a lot of different stuff, but you know, our time is very limited. Yeah. And we're really erratic people. Like I decided that we're doing this podcast like five minutes before we started. And then we went over our notes for all the things that we wanted to talk about on the podcast. All the questions we have. Yeah. So hopefully. Which we hope we addressed in a random sort of way. Without- yeah. We don't really take a questions and answers zone because, you know. We, we just kind of make note of the answers and then kind of squeeze them into our big, long, random bladder. Yeah. So that's fun anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in the new year, um, we're going to be working on our own stuff. We're also going to be working on our other projects, which we have. Um, I'm the admin of One Handed Writers, which is a blog for erotica authors and readers. Uh, so if you're interested in that, the link is down below. We have a lot of really great authors, um, Selena Kitt, uh, Sky Warren, who I mentioned earlier. And a bunch of our lovely darkness yes. writers who have been doing well. And continually better with their publishing, too, which I'm very happy to see. Yeah, Leona Reich is there. Um, Cerise Delis is there. A. Vivian Bain. They're all people from Dark Nest who um, have been doing really well with writing and have really interesting um, perspectives on um self-publishing we have people who have been doing this for years like selena kitt's been publishing since like 2006 or something like that uh we, we'd gotten into that. yeah <laughs> that'd be awesome instead of working at the shit job i was at in 2006 that honey i need you to go to your people tell them we need access to one of their time machines we don't even need it for a lot just go back to like 2006 or so that's all a small favor you can't see but i'm staring at him very coolly yeah we don't say that we just do it human things oh okay (laughs) (laughs) so yeah we have a lot of people who are um new and old and in between uh who love talking about erotica and romance and uh you know all the different ideas they have and different thoughts they have so definitely check that out if you're interested in this type of stuff i think it's pretty cool um as well we have dark nest which we mentioned earlier uh that's for fantasy erotica which a lot of the times it's art and stories and role play there's all kinds of cool shit yeah Dark Nest is an awesome place. We we took that over. I take took that over. We conquered it. We conquered it <laughs> in uh, November. As the pod people would say November of 2012. So it's been in our possession for over a year, and it hasn't burned down yet. Yeah, it's been doing great, actually. Yeah, no, I'm very impressed. People seem to be liking our changes, and they seem to be very happy there, which is important to us. We like nice people, and we like being surrounded by nice people, so it's a good place to be. I think that's it for 2013. Um, yeah. Though, what you should really do is very sexually, you know, entice people to the Patreon thing. If you guys donate to our Patreon thing, I'll give you erotic readings in my voice. Of saying naughty words. Like breasts. Say so spank me Patreon. Oh, spank Pat, me. Patron. Patron, that's right, yeah. Patreon's yeah. the name of the site. Yeah. Patron is the whole term, yeah. Sorry, I had a pod person on. Spank me, Patron. Spank me. There you go. Perfect. Do you yeah. guys want to be spanked now? Or 
No, they want us to spank you. It's, oh, oh yeah. you, you guys want to spank me now? Is yeah, that better? That's what you were saying. Right, yeah. 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 Yes. Spank me. <laughs> Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this is done. This is a fucking train wreck now. <laughs> Thanks for being here and being awesome in 2013. I hope that we have not frightened you and you will come back I to hope us we have in 2014. Frightened and aroused. Oh, I love fright roused. I love being fright roused. Will you fright rouse me?